Discovery Cove calls themselves a theme park, but I wouldn't really call it that. What this place feels like is an all-inclusive tropical resort smack dab in the middle of Orlando, and it also happens to have some animals. It has such a different feel than all the other parks in Central Florida. For some, that's a good thing. For others, not so much. Find out if this place is worth it for you in this review. Discovery Cove opened in 2000. It's conveniently located across the street from SeaWorld Orlando, and also owned by them. This part is key if you're a Platinum Pass holder. I'm going to bury the hatchet now. The worst part about this place by far is the cost. It is extremely expensive. The base ticket starts at $200 per person per day. You will only get this rate on an off-peak day if you order well in advance. Tickets can cost as much as $300 during busier periods. Thankfully, there are discounts. Florida residents get 20% off, and more notably, SeaWorld Platinum Pass holders get nearly 50% off. What is included in this ticket, you may ask? A lot of stuff you'd expect at a fancy resort. Here is the full list. Unlimited food and drinks. This even includes alcohol. Lockers, towels, sunscreen, wetsuits, life jackets, and snorkeling gear, including prescription goggles if you have bad vision like me. What's not included are some of the more iconic animal encounters. These will cost you mightily. The most famous is the dolphin swim. This is the package my fiancé and I had. This is booked with your main ticket. So admission plus the dolphin swim will run you about $250 to $400 per person. As before, the cheapest rates occur during quieter periods if you buy way in advance. These can sell out, so it's prudent to book them in advance if it's a must for you. Thankfully, passholder discounts apply to this experience and any other animal encounters as well. We did not try the other paid animal encounters. These included the Sea Venture underwater walking tour of the Grand Reef, swimming with the sharks, and some up-close animal encounters such as the Flamingo Mingle, which attractions are included with the base ticket. There are three main ones that should not be missed. First is the Grand Reef. This is far and away the best thing that's included with the base ticket. This is a giant pool where you swim with thousands of tropical fish and manta rays. I expected most of the animals to swim away from me, but much to my amazement, they were so unfazed by humans that they swim right up next to you. Heck, some even touched you. It was breathtaking to see. Two things to note about this experience though. One, the water levels vary mightily. You'll be knee deep in some parts, others go as deep as 12 feet. Even if you can swim, I would recommend a life jacket so you can float carefree at your leisure and focus on the animals around you instead of burning a ton of energy swimming. Two, I had never snorkeled before and there was a bit of a learning curve figuring out how to do it comfortably. Look up some tips for beginners. The biggest one is to forcefully exhale water if it starts to fill up. Another wonderful attraction is Windaway River. This feels like a lazy river, just without the tubes. It is a slow moving stream, and most importantly, it is super scenic. You pass through caves and some beautiful vegetation. We went around this several times. Two notes on this experience. One, the water depth also varies. It would quickly go up to 8 feet for some parts of it. Two, the edges and bottoms of the river are pretty rough, so it's easy to scrape your feet if you're not careful. The final attraction that should not be missed is Explorer's Aviary. Here, a bunch of colorful birds fly overhead, and most interestingly, you can feed the birds for free. You grab a cup and hold it out in front of you. Without fail, a bird or two will jump right into your arm to get the food. It's quite surprising for the first time it happens, but it's really neat. Then there's the dolphin swim that we paid extra for. This takes place in the giant dolphin lagoon in the center of the park. If you don't pay for this experience, you can still see the dolphins, but you can't really get close to them. The SeaWorld parks offer a dolphin encounter too. Most of this experience was identical to that. The dolphin performs tricks in front of you. You then get an opportunity to pet it, and the staff members will take your photos. And before you ask, no electronics are allowed in the pool for the safety of the animals, so unless someone else in your party stays on land to take photos for you, you'll be paying a premium. Photo packages start at $100. The end of the dolphin experience features a dolphin swim. While I love dolphins and it was neat, 
It was way briefer than I imagined. It lasted all of five seconds. You grab the tail fin and are pulled maybe 10 yards through the water. That is it. So just know what you're paying for. What else do you get at Discovery Cove? Another key part is the relaxing atmosphere. You have lush vegetation everywhere. There's no shortage of trees, flowers, and rocks. You are completely isolated from the outside world, further adding to the feeling that you have been teleported to an island destination. Especially since you have sandy beaches and a bazillion lounge chairs too. This place is beautiful. And every staff member we interacted with was super friendly. This includes the employees at the shops and stands, plus those working the animal encounters. Then there is the food. As I mentioned earlier, it is unlimited. The main restaurant is Laguna Grill. Until 10.30 a.m., you can get breakfast foods like eggs, waffles, bacon, and fruit. The rest of the day, you can get entrees like burgers, salmon, and even steak. While the food was plentiful, I thought it was mostly just okay in quality. The only item I thought was particularly good was the steak. I ate 10 pieces of that. You also have a flatbread pizza place. These are just okay as well. Then you have two other snack stands with things such as pretzels and chips. I would recommend getting the higher quality food considering you already paid for it with your admission ticket. Then you have unlimited drinks, including alcohol. The fancier drinks cost extra, but you can get some standard beers. There is one problem with dining here though. The birds. Where I'm from, birds are deathly afraid of humans. At Discovery Cove, they will swarm your table in flocks. They are even bold enough to jump on the table right in front of you if you don't shoo them away. And if you leave any food behind when you stand up, forget about it. They'll be all over it in seconds. We felt like we had to watch over our shoulder while eating at all times. Now that I covered the attractions, let's jump back to the arrival experience. Florida is notorious for some monstrous thunderstorms. They are very common on summer afternoons. Each ticket comes with one complimentary rebooking. If storms are going to be a problem for most of your visit, I highly recommend rescheduling. Every single attraction here is outdoors, so thunder and lightning can ruin your day. When you arrive, you'll shockingly find free parking. You do not get that at the other major parks in Orlando. All guests then check in at the front desk upon arrival. There, the staff member goes over the layout and included amenities. They also book times for any animal encounters you pre-booked and paid extra for. The attractions are open from 9am to 5pm daily, but you can arrive as early as 7am. There are several perks of arriving early. First, times are first come first served for the animal experiences. If you know Florida, you know that thunderstorm will come in the afternoon, especially in the summer months. Therefore, it is prudent to book an earlier time to prevent being stormed out of your encounter. Second, breakfast starts at 7.30 a.m. Come hungry and fill yourself up before starting a day of fun. Third, there are quite a few things you'll want to do before jumping in the water. These include getting your equipment. I highly recommend taking the included wetsuits. Not only do they keep you comfortable in the water, but they'll also make it less likely you'll get a sunburn on your back. These are available on racks near a changing room. You can also grab your snorkeling gear. If you need prescription goggles, you can get these at a gift shop near the main entrance. Then life jackets are on racks near the waterways. You also likely will want to grab a locker. A lot of people leave their things in the lounge chairs, but I don't trust people. I recommend getting a locker near the center of the park near Laguna Grill. That way it's easier to check your phone when you're walking by or enjoying a meal. Then you also want to apply sunscreen. There are several stations throughout the park offering a special formulation that's safe for the animals. Make sure to apply early and often, especially if you're in the water. Otherwise, you will get burned here with how much time you'll spend in the sun. So do I recommend Discovery Cove. If you want a day of relaxation, this is the place for you. We purposely put this in the middle of our most recent Disney trip, and it was a good way to rest and recharge after some long park days. This place is also great if you want some intimate animal encounters. However, I have to go back to the price. Even with our Platinum Passes getting us half off, we did think it was overpriced for what it was. We had fun and we're glad we did it once, but neither my fiancé nor myself feel the need to go back here anytime soon. Based on our tastes, 
we think you get far better value at the Orlando theme parks. So those are my thoughts on Discovery Cove, the most unique park in Florida. What are your thoughts on this place? Have you been there? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.